tab. Uh, and yeah, so I'll, I'll cover kind of a few slides of uh, what we're working on and how we're using frictionless. And then uh, Emma will also uh, pick, pick up uh, some of the presentation. So, uh, so I'll start with the, uh, what we're working on. So we're working on a format called Waxy. And uh, before I get to that, I just uh, a little bit of background of kind of who we are. Uh, so uh, the Web Recorder project uh, was started in 2014. Uh, then it became part of Rhizome for about four years. Uh, and now, again, it's an independent project. Uh, and our focus is really on development of uh, open source tools for web archiving, uh, which is basically building tools for people to capture and replay the web as accurately as possible. And so uh, Web Recorder itself is not an archive, but it built tools for others to create their own archives. Uh, and the idea is to make that as easy as possible. And uh, uh, obviously important to web archiving is the actual web archiving data. And so that's, uh, so I'll be talking about that today. Uh, and sort of what is the state of the data formats in, in web archives? Well, actually we use all uh, very specialized formats. Uh, the main one currently is called WARC, uh, which is created by the Internet Archive and is now an ISO standard. And it basically contains the raw HTTP uh, response and request data. Uh, it does not contain an index. Uh, it just basically has the raw data there uh, of the HTTP requests and the response is all stored for uh, access later. Uh, then another format that we commonly use is uh, called CDX or CDXJ, which is a, a plain text index for work files. Uh, basically plain text with each line uh, representing a URL and timestamp and additional metadata. And it's typically sorted uh, uh, for uh, for easy binary search. Um, and those are basically the two formats. The, the CDX format is not even standardized in any way. Uh, and there's no formats for page uh, full text search or any other metadata. Um, and so with uh, uh, traditional web archives, uh, like Internet Archive and others uh, at, at various national libraries around the world, uh, they store terabytes or petabytes of data. Uh, and that raw data is generally not exchanged, partially because it's so big. Uh, some archives might offer work files for download. Uh, I think Internet Archive offers some of their data for, for download, but not all of it. Uh, and generally access to this data is provided via uh, the Wayback Machine or other specialized APIs. And uh, since uh, each institution sort of has its own policies of how they store metadata, full text search uh, and, and page list, that means that there's really no portable way to exchange uh, smaller collections. And that's really hasn't been their focus because if you have terabytes or petabytes of data, you're not really thinking about how to allow people to download that store it somewhere else and share that. Uh, with Web Recorder, our focus is uh, on much smaller archives uh, in the megabytes for gigabytes of data rather than terabytes and petabytes. And so uh, we definitely are thinking about how to make these archives portable. Uh, and for that, we really need a portable data format that can uh, support this. And we want to transfer not just the raw work data, but additional metadata, uh, essentially anything that's needed to access the web archive. Uh, and so that's why we're proposing kind of an yet another specialized format for this uh, that is geared towards portability. Uh, and uh, that's where we introduced the WAXI format, which stands for Web Archive Collection Zipped. Uh, and basically this format can contain uh, multiple types of web archiving data, which will cover and uh, also the data package that JSON. So it acts as a frictionless data package uh, and all the files additionally are packaged uh, as a zip file uh, for portability. Uh, and kind of, again, what, what are the, the, the use cases for what Waxy? It's not just we're solving a technical problem, but also sort of a social one. Uh, we really need to have more than just the raw HTTP data uh, that can be passed around. Uh, and so we need the, the random access index, which is the CDX. We also need a list of pages uh, that point to URLs that users can uh, can start from. So if, if you just look at a work file, it basically has all of the URLs that uh, that are part of uh, 
a web archive, including all the JavaScript, images, CSS, uh, anything that might come from a web page. And most of those files are not sort of starting points for someone to, to browse from. And uh, the page list provides a way for us to, uh, to kind of point the user to pages that are important uh, and, and are actually browsable. Um, and so we bundle all of this data into a single file uh, using the zip format essentially. Uh, and kind of a, a neat bonus of this is that uh, because we're using zip, uh, the Waxy format supports random access, which is really important. So we can load uh, from the zip file, we can actually load on demand uh, small parts of the zip file without downloading the whole thing uh, and access the index. And then uh, from that, based on that index, figure out where to access the actual raw data uh, and, and load that from the work files. Uh, and so that allows for uh, efficient uh, uh, access to larger web, web archives over the web. Um, and so uh, now I'll turn it over to Emma to kind of talk about the details of how, of how we're, uh, uh, of what is in the, the Waxy format. Yeah, so um, Waxy, like Ilya has been saying, it's basically in the simplest terms, a zipper for a work file. And right now it contains the following uh, folders. So if you were to unzip a Waxy file, you would get an archive folder, an indexes folder, a pages folder, and a data package.json. So I'm just gonna kind of explain what purpose all of those serve. The archive contains the raw sort of web archive data. Usually it's a work file. So if you created a Waxy file from an existing work file, it would be added um, in the archive folder. So if you unzipped it and you looked in the archive folder, you would see the full original work. Um, the indexes um, include the various indexes um, in the CDX format um, or the CDX.jz um, and IDX format. So I think right now you can basically either store um, either pass a flag and have the indexes be stored as a CDX or get a CDX.jz file along with an IDX file. And these are just indexing the pages that you pass in the work file. So it looks into the work file and indexes all of those pages. So they're easily accessible. And then the pages folder is slightly different. Um, we recently, Originally, uh, there was a separate full text search that would create a separate folder. And we recently kind of combined um, that functionality into just the pages.jsonl file. So basically, if you opened up the pages uh, folder, you would see a pages.jsonl file, which is a list of page objects um, in JSON format that would have a valid URL, um, a timestamp, a title, uh, an ID, which is optional. The title is also optional. Um, and text, which is an optional extraction um, of the text of the page. So that's one of the features I'm going to talk about in a minute. But basically, you can pass a flag to Waxy and get text extraction. Um, it's optional, but it's one of the more powerful features in terms of making web archives that are human readable and useful. Because if you have the full text extract, you can really easily set up full text search of every page in the archive. So if you're dealing with a really heavy, complicated archive with a lot of different pages, this makes it a lot easier to find resources. Uh, and then the data package.json file. Uh, we've basically used this as the manifest for the web archive. Um, our current implementation is pretty simple. We use either MD5 or SHA-256 to hash the resources. Uh, we try to follow the frictionless standard, and we also support um, additional metadata that the user can pass in. So currently, we allow the user to pass in a title, a description of the archive, a main page URL, and a main page timestamp if they want to specify an entry point into the archive. Um, yeah, and so how we've actually implemented it at a code level, we're using the Python frictionless library to validate our data package.jsonl file. Um, we don't want to stray, stray from the standard that the community has set. So when you, there's a validate function um, in Waxy, you can validate an existing Waxy to see if it's 
uh, formatted correctly. And we use the validate function functionality from the frictionless library to ensure that we've correctly formatted the data package. Um, and we also manually check that our resources have accurate hashes and refer to pages that actually exist. So we want the data package to be a really useful metadata object um, in terms of archiving and, and researching. So we're trying to conform it to frictionless standards and also have it um, include some of the meta metadata that users might find particularly useful for this case. Oh yeah, tools for working with Waxi. Um, so we have PyWaxi, which is the reference implementation in Python, um, which basically allows you to get the command line tool. Um, you can create Waxi files from works, page detection, or specify list and additional metadata. Includes optional text extraction via boilerpipe, which we kind of talked about. And like I just mentioned, it will validate existing Waxi, so it'll check the data package using the friction list um, check, as well as check the zip file structures and uh, revalidate the hashes, like I mentioned. So for user tools, you can go to replay web page, um, which will allow you to load the web archive files directly in the browser. Um, it supports Waxi as well as raw works. You can load web page archives on demand. Um, Wabak.js is a core JavaScript library for reading Waxies in the browser. Um, so it's very useful. And soon we'll have a archive web browser extension, which basically allows you to archive as you browse and export Waxy files, and it can be validated using PyWaxy. And we don't have that. I've, I've used a version of that, um, and it's very useful. So it's, it's a really neat little tool. And uh, I'll actually uh, try to do a quick demo of this uh, so, so you kind of see what, what we're talking about. Uh, and this is, again, this is still very new, so it might break, but uh, we'll just hope that that works. And so the idea with this uh, is that we'll have a browser extension that allows you to archive essentially as you're browsing. And so, and what does that mean? So here we are in, on the frictionless data page. So I go to the extension uh, and let's see, maybe I'll create a, so I'll create a new collection here called demo. Uh, and then I'll start. And so what this does is it's archiving uh, everything that's being loaded in the browser. Uh, and so you can actually see the, uh, the size counter here going up. Uh, and uh, it's basically loading uh, and storing all of the, all the URLs that are loaded just on this page. Uh, so it's entirely user driven. It's not doing any kind of crawling. Uh, it's basically just, uh, archiving the pages that I browse. And so I, I click on this page. So uh, this page is, is archived. And so it kind of allows for uh, very much user directed archiving. Uh, so I click on another page. Uh, and let's say I, I go to, uh, let's say I, I can even archive social media this way. So I would go to, uh, let's say I go to uh, Twitter in this case. And uh, and so again, it's archiving just the, the things that are currently loaded. Um, we'll have additional functionality to help automate this later. Um, and then, uh, so let's say I'll just click stop and I'll browse this archive. And uh, let's see here, um, hopefully this worked. Okay, so, so we see that this, uh, yes, so, I, I can start with the first page that I've archived, which is uh, uh, the uh, frictionless data homepage. And I should be able to click on uh, on these pages. And so what you're seeing now uh, is loaded entirely from the web archive. So I, uh, if we were not demoing online, I could disconnect my connection and show that this is still being loaded. Um, I can click on, on the tools that, or on the pages that I've previously browsed and I can should be able to click on the Twitter uh, page. And so basically this provides kind of a, uh, a list of the pages that I've visited. I think that the, uh, actually visited more pages than these two, but I think, and kind of the complexity of this is that things are loaded via, uh, without doing a full page load, it, it will not show up in this list, but it should be in this archive. Uh, and so what I can do then is, uh, so this is, 
working in the extension, uh, I can then download all of these pages as a Waxy file uh, or as a plain work. Uh, but as we mentioned, the, the Waxy contains all the additional metadata. And so I've now downloaded that. Uh, it is uh, on my uh, machine. And I can even, I should be able to see here, I should be able to, uh, if I go to my command line, I should be able to, using our, if, if I wanted to, I, I should be able to validate. Um, let's see if this works. So we have the PyWaxy installed here. And so I'm validating that this, this Waxy file is valid. Um, if I do unzip on it and kind of show what, what's in there, uh, you can see that it contains kind of these, uh, just so it's a little bit easier to see. So it has kind of the, the data package, uh, the index Texas folder, the archive folder, uh, and the, the page list. Um, and what I could also do with this then is using the, the replay web page tool. So this file is now in my machine. I could open it directly. I could also put it up online uh, and share it with anyone. And then uh, you could basically just open this file uh, and browse it uh, on uh, essentially in your browser. So this is loaded entirely in the browser. Um, and again, I can, uh, it does not require to have the extension installed to browse it only to create the data. Um, and I have the kind of the, the basically the, uh, the few pages that I archived uh, should be here. Uh, Twitter should also work. Um, and this is all loading from that Waxy file. Um, what this also supports is, so these are the pages. Um, we also support uh, hopefully the full text search work. So if I search for frictionless, uh, you can see that it uh, finds some results. Uh, maybe if I search for Twitter, uh, it, it should find the, the Twitter page in particular, uh, maybe. So if I search for guide, it'll uh, link to that. And I can also search by by URLs as well, which is sort of, this is kind of the raw data that's only in the work file, but I could uh, also filter by that. So there's multiple ways to uh, kind of, from a user perspective to, to look at the data here. Um, and all of this is loaded from a portable format, the Waxy format. Um, and uh, yeah, that, that's basically the, the idea is to have this kind of uh, format for exchanging small amounts of web archive data. Again, we're talking about megabytes and gigabytes, not terabytes and petabytes here, but this should scale at least to, uh, and has been tested with uh, tens of gigabytes of data so far. Um, and uh, yeah, that's that's kind of uh, the, the general idea uh, and uh, you can contact us at uh, uh, via email, or also we have a forum uh, where about general discussion about web recorder. Uh, and I guess we're kind of here to answer any questions, or if you have any recommendations, since we're uh, we're basically creating kind of a new format from scratch, uh, uh, building on existing formats, of course. But uh, this, is, this is sort of the intent. And uh, if you have any feedback for for us, we'd, we're definitely happy to to listen. Uh, so, and thank you for having us.